Last week, a Kansas judge tentatively approved a $264 million settlement over antitrust allegations related to the marketing and sale of epinephrine. A final hearing is set for July. And according to reporting by The Intercept, the deal puts Heather Bresch Milan, former CEO and Joe Manchin's daughter, on track to dodge legal repercussions. At the same time, Senator Joe Manchin secured $2.1 million for biomedical and behavioral research centers at West Virginia University. The school is currently in talks to inherit a former Milan plant in Morgantown, which was shuttered in November of 2020. Joining us now is Daniel Bogoslaw, investigative reporter for The Intercept. Welcome, Daniel. Hey, thanks for having me, Ryan. Hey, so can you uh, lay out for us the relation, the, the interesting and long-term relationship between Joe Manchin, his daughter, Heather Bresch, the company Mylan, and, and West Virginia University? Sure. So uh, you know, starting with Mylan, it, this was the uh, largest uh, manufacturing plant of generic pharmaceuticals in the country uh, before it shut down. It was a powerhouse of production in the southern tip of the Rust Belt, one of the last remaining sites of industrial manu manufacturing there. Um, it, it was a community anchor. Uh, it employed nearly 1,500 uh, local workers um, and, and was long a sort of staple of the community. People had very fond uh, relations with the owner, Mike Puskar. Um, and again, it was really just sort of this um, uh, staple. Um, uh, Joe Manchin's uh, daughter, Heather Bresch, uh, got involved slowly working her way up, uh, eventually becoming CEO. Um, around the time there was a real C-suite shakeup. Um, in 2009, uh, the, the founder, Puskar, stepped down. Uh, a number of new CEOs came in, and around that time the culture started to change. The, the uh, you know, Christmas turkeys disappeared. Um, you know, Puskar walking the factory floor disappeared, um, and the, 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 the climates quickly kind of began to disintegrate. Um, now, crucial to, to Brescia's appointment was, was the fact that she received uh, a, a secondary degree from West Virginia University, which would have given her the credentials uh, to sell herself as a successful CEO. Um, but when a local newspaper called after the announcement uh, that she was named to check those credentials to make sure that she actually had that degree, um, they, they, they quickly found that th this degree wasn't made of anything. Uh, the, the president of the university offered one response, uh, the registrar another, um, and after an investigation, it became clear that that degree was awarded without Manchin completing any of the necessary credits. Um, and the degree was ultimately rescinded, although she maintained uh, her position um, at Mylon uh, and, and ultimately held on to that throughout a number of other uh, ensuing scandals. And let me, let me just add one extra Mansion element to this, and then let's, let's go into the discussion. A, you know, Mansion and Puskar were, were friends, and we, we now know from, from our reporting that, uh, that Mansion is the one who got Heather Bresch the job at Milan originally by asking for a favor uh, from Pushkar. He was, and, and he was also uh, governor at the time that West Virginia University fraudulently claimed that she had a degree. And so he oversaw West Virginia University. Uh, there, were, there, were, uh, you know, there were allegations at the time that Manchin had been involved with this, but that was never, that was never proven. But it was, it was shown that there was political interference from the very highest levels to push the idea that she did that she did have this a degree. And so the plant, the plant finally shut down, as you said, in, in 2020. The, the union and the workers had pushed uh, for, a lot, for a variety of different solutions. They said, what about Defense Production Act? You know, can't you, can't, isn't there some use for a, an effective plant, a pharmaceutical plant in the middle of a pandemic? There's nothing that can be done here. They also tried to find other pharmaceutical companies that would come in and and buy this and, and use and use this plant so that the workers could put their expertise to work. That that didn't happen, despite their the relationship between you know Bresch, Mansion, and all of the other uh, power structures. So what what role did Mansion play in all of this? 
Well, I think ultimately at the end, after, you know, kind of safeguarding his daughter's entire career trajectory and initiating it, you know, Manchin ultimately took a back seat uh, from protecting the lar largest economic driver uh, in the region and in, in the place that that's his political foothold um, in, in northern West Virginia. You know, he, he ultimately wrote a letter for uh, special status for the plan at the 11th hour, just days before it, it was officially closed down. Um, and, you know, did next to nothing to, uh, you know, support union workers. Um, uh, you know, oh, wait, daughter we, walked away we, with... We, we lost you. Let's... Are you there? Yeah, pick, pick it up at ultimately, like... Yeah, I, I think it's ultimately striking that uh, despite this plant shutting down, uh, you know, hundreds of union workers losing uh, solid union jobs, his daughter ultimately walked away with 30 million and has subsequently dodged uh, a number of investigations into her role inflating, uh, you know, EpiPens and, and a product that, uh, you know, she profited off of immensely, ultimately at the cost of this facility. I think this is the biggest problem that so many of us have with politics in general and politicians is just this ability. You know, once they, it, this is supposed to be a job for a public servant, or they're supposed to work for us. The really the pay is is not enough for them to get wealthy off of, but they still end up getting very wealthy. And I know Manchin already was previously before getting into office, but the fact that they're able to use their position to help their family members and to and to enrich their family members or even at their spouses. Uh, I mean, this is the biggest, you know, obviously the, the EpiPen scandal with it rising from what was it like $124 to 600 and something dollars over the course of just a couple of years is a giant scandal, especially for those people who genuinely need that. But on top of that is just this, this corruption. And I know it's not illegal. I get that. It's not illegal, but that's the, so that's the problem with it is like, okay, we could look into mansion and then we find sure. out how much, how much uh, of the campaign contributions came from this company, I would imagine quite a bit. But sure, it's but not I think, uh, sure, but I think the critical thing uh, to understand too, in respects to uh, you know Manchin's family, is that you know while while he's safeguarded the career of his daughter, the the union president of the Mylon plant was actually Joe Manchin's own cousin, who you know was permanently disabled on his boat uh, in the seventies, and who after reaching out over and over and over again for help. Uh, you know, was met with silence from from his own cousin on behalf of you know 1,400 union workers. So I think it's also important to remember that not all of Manchin's family members uh, are treated equally. Well, and, he could have maybe siphoned off a bit of that 30 million and said, "Here you go, cousin. Yeah. I'll give you a little something <laughs> on the side." Yeah, but didn't happen. And so uh, let, that brings us up to this what this to, this money that he got for West Virginia University. You know, just step stepping back. You would say, okay, good. Finally, there's, you know, this this plant is going to be uh, utilized thanks to thanks to Ma Mansion and Shelley Moore Capito sending sending money there. But that also is, is kind of what was in the interests of the major pharmaceutical company Pfizer that ended up buying this plant because they didn't want a competitor, you, I would presume, to come in and be able to use that plant. So it's actually much better for the parent company that instead of having these 1,400 workers go back into the plant and continue to make generic drugs, which we need, it turns into a research facility for West Virginia University. Is, am, am I reading that right? Yeah, I think that's correct. I mean, those jobs were ultimately outsourced and, and shipped overseas. And, you know, uh, more reporting I have out today shows that, uh, you know, Joe Manchin's wife has actually invested in biotech startups uh, at West Virginia, Virginia University. So. You know, this the West, West Virginia University has been a uh, limited inc economic incubator um, for uh, wealthy investors in the state who, who partner with startups. Um, but in terms of its impact in the community, I think it's difficult to understand how uh, anything that, you know, they're putting into that space. And let's be clear, they haven't uh, made clear what that space is going to be used for or whether it's been officially transferred. But it's hard to imagine what could replace, you know, a union factory uh, in terms of economic driver in this region. You know, the estimated impact of this loss is somewhere, you know, around 2.5 billion. So how that's going to be made up is an open question. Okay. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We'll be back with more Rising right after this.